Well, hi there, and welcome to a special session that we're recording for a podcast, but also for our virtual pre-Drupa event that we're running uh, in a few days. And I'm very pleased to have a, a couple of key people who are involved in uh, a panel that we're doing that's been put together by Cabot uh, that's focusing on digital print for packaging. And this is going to be a very interesting session. I'm going to I'm going to let Neil tell us a little bit more about it in a moment. But let me first introduce the two speakers. Both these guys are part of the panel. Uh, both of them have a, a lot to say about digital print for packaging. Uh, so I'll let them speak. Let me go first to Johannes Piaga. Have I pronounced your surname right, Johannes? Yeah, Johannes Piga, yeah. Piga, Piga, Piga. Of Schumacher Packaging. Johannes, good to meet you. Good to see you. You're welcome. Good morning. Hi. Um, just, Johannes, just before we go to Neil, just give us a quick overview of you. Uh, don't know much about you. So tell, tell the audience a little bit about you. Schumacher Packaging, big player in the market. So explain a little bit more about you. I mean, I'm starting, yeah, I'm starting with me. Um, Johannes, I'm 36 years old. I'm working for Schumacher as the digital print manager since 12 years now. Um, we started on a very early place with, with digital printing at Schumacher Group. And for me, myself, I was studying. I finished in 2012 and then I joined Schumacher Packaging. And I was take over the pre-press at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. which is the most important part of digital printing. So it's very great. And then from time to time, from the pre-press, I switched into getting the digital print manager since 2016 now, I would say. And that means we have plans and machines all over Europe. And we have like a machines in, in UK, in Poland, digital printing machines in the Netherlands and also in Germany, around Germany. So I'm traveling a lot as well. So for myself, I'm a print media engineer, studied print media engineer. And the funny thing is, I'm related to paper and to machine building since generation because my grandfather was working in a paper mill and my father is a, is a, media, is a print engineer and a maintenance engineer. So he was building machines the last, the last year in maintenance uh, machines. He retired last week. So now it's, I'm closing the loop of the family because I'm in the packaging industry, in the paper industry and doing printing uh, digital print machines, which is like, the next step for the family. Yeah. So we will see yeah, what's yeah. coming afterwards. So so very much it's in your blood. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, Neil, Neil Cullum, you, you're director of Inkjet for sales and marketing at Cabot. Neil, just give us a, a little bit of explanation about yourself, your own personal journey in, in the print and packaging industry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody. Hi, hi Fraser. So uh, my name's Neil Cullum. Uh, I work for Cabot uh, Inkjet Colorants. Uh, so anybody who doesn't know us, we're an American company uh, headquartered over in Boston. Our core technology uh, for this market is 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 uh, aqueous pigment dispersions that go into the inkjet inks. Um, I've been in, uh, been working for Cabot, this division of Cabot, for almost twenty years. Uh, before that, I was also in the digital print market working for Fujifilm up in Manchester. Um, so I've got a, a long, long history in this marketplace. Um, my current job, um, I'm responsible for the sales and the marketing uh, for our dispersions on a global basis. Uh, so that means, uh, you know, looking after the the sales of, of uh, our products into established markets like the desktop, into the office, the graphic uh, graphic arts marketplace mm -hmm. um, and also you know helping to formulate and then delivering our very I think very compelling value proposition into this new market which is which is the package printing um, which is really what we're here to talk about today and which is what our, our event in in uh, in in Drupal is all about is yeah. inkjet really penetrating into that packaging market yeah so um, just for Clarity, say, so explain uh, a bit more about hosting that that session. So, so we've got this session, haven't we, with eight eight, eight people speaking, which is a really big group, but with lots of interesting content in there. It's May the thirty first. It's it's in Hall One, and uh, I think it's Room Seventeen, running eleven thirty till twelve thirty. But just explain a bit more about the kind of the story around it, what we're trying to do there. Well, 
we at Cabot, re- we really believe in this, the, you know, inkjet and what inkjet can do as a production tool for the packaging market. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, from a sustainability point of view, from a, uh, from a supply chain, uh, from all of the interesting things that the designers and the brands can do with digital printing to really drive this engagement with their customers. Um, what we've tried to do with this event, though, really, is is pull together. It's an event that you're hosting, you're, you're, you're going to be comparing. It's a panel event. But what we've tried to do is bring um, as many representatives from all the way across the, the value chain mm-hmm. um, together to give their own unique perspective. So trying, trying to give a really, really rounded view of the technology, the opportunities in the market, the challenges in the market. Sure. Sure. Uh, we we want to really drive this conversation uh, ultimately to promote and then drive the penetration of of, of inkjet. Yeah. Um, we have, um, you know, representatives from the OEMs, uh, Koenig and Bauer, and also EFI are attending and will be speaking. Uh, we have uh, uh, Nestle representing uh, the the brand owners, so the world's largest food company. Yeah. Are very very engaged. Johannes is also representing the printer converter market, and he'll speak, um, you know, you know, uh, to, to that point today on this call. But mm. you know, the real pioneers in the Euro- European market for digital print. For, yeah, for it's going to be a good session, isn't it? It's going to be. A good and then session. further on down, we have uh, Jonathan Sands, you know, coming from the designers' perspective. Yep. Jonathan is 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 a well known figure in that part of the market. Um, and, and Ian Schofield, you know, uh, decades of experience in the, the UK retail environment. Yeah. So what about the retailers? We're trying to bring a really rounded view of the whole value chain. Yeah, so- it's going, going to be an excellent panel. Let's let's just find out a bit more from Johannes. Obviously, Johannes, you, you're you representing, I guess, the manufacturer, the, the, the packaging converter on the panel. But, you know, as you said yourself, you're a, very, you're a significant player in the market. Um, useful for anyone listening just to get an understanding of what you see as the kind of key trends in packaging pa- packaging production at the moment. So the key trends are the cu- customers really ask for minimize the waste, waste reductions, and they also asking for sustainable packaging and also for safety packaging. Mm-hmm. So this is something safety reasons and then treasure treasure packaging is something you you can do with digital in the future what do you mean by that johannes explain because i don't understand so just explain a bit more about that so that means that it's it's really related to the customer in the end so you order something and you can see what is inside the packaging the packaging must be safe this is something you you can't open the postman can't open the packaging and without you will realize if you if you receive it Mm-hmm. This is step number one. Yep. But the other one is, you know exactly by scanning something, some QR code or whatever on the packaging, what must be inside and is everything inside. Yep. And this is something important. This is something we really see from the e-commerce market coming in the future. And also what we also see is uh, um, like the labeling. So in in Europe, it looks like it will be forbidden to have a second labeling on the on the packaging. So this makes digital more interesting because that means you have to have all your internal codes for for all your internal uh, steps in the company. You have to have on the packaging because yeah. the label you have on it is just for the post to see what is the who's going to be delivered. So that's that's it, and this is very interesting. So also sustainability is something who comes up. Waste reduction is something who came up the last years as well. I think it stopped a little bit by COVID, Mm. but now people, as the situation is going back normal, um, people trying to ask again. And I mean, it's clear for everyone uh, that we have to do something for the environment and that we have to do something through the climate change and everything that the next generations will be safe as well. Mm -hmm. But luckily, from, from my perspective, personally, I think in our packaging industry, we stepped forward very early. We invested a lot of money. Also, Schumacher Packaging was investing a lot of money and a lot of million euros the last years um, to do the carbon reduction and everything. And and I believe 
um, that we in our industry, for us, it's easier um, to move forward with sustainability and to be prepared for the future. Sure, sure. But we will discuss that, this on the, on the trooper as well. I yeah, think. yeah. Do you think that, um, do you think, obviously you've got analog technology and digital technology. Do you think digital works well on that sustainability story? I think so because you really reduce your like your, your waste. You really reduce the ink waste. Uh, you have no print bleaches, no plates anymore, no plates anymore, and you can exactly plan how much I would say sheets or orders you need, and then print exactly that number. Because with digital, if you have a good color management, if you have a well done, well organized workflow and prepress, which is the most important part. Um, you don't have to fix anything on the machine. So it's just push the button then. Yeah. That means if you have night shift and you print something and you reprint the order a couple of weeks later, you just push the button and it will look exactly the same. So the customer will have exactly the same. If you have a convention like lamination or, fle or flexo print, then you always have people mixing the ink. So it always looks different because every people has different feelings. And that won't happen with digital. So this is a, a big step also and a, and, a, and a big game changer. Just just to finish off this point here, I, I just think that people probably listening are thinking, right, well, you know, I, maybe I'm an analog packaging converter. I want to understand just how that digital technology fits, fits into the bigger process, the production process. Uh, explain how easy that has been for you, how straightforward it is to integrate digital print into your production. Well, something important for us from the beginning to the end was always that there's no change in production through, from step to step with digital. So it must fit in without changing the whole process because then it makes no sense. Then it's getting exp expensive and then it makes no sense for us to uh, move forward with digital. As we have been, as we said, very early beginners with digital, um, we were trying to push all our suppliers, um, if it comes to post print, digital post print, single pass post print, um, to get in this direction that we don't change our processes. So we just turn out a flexo printer and put in a digital printer. But when it comes to pre print and digital pre print, or what we call now inline print with a big BHS printer, that's completely different because yeah. you print inside the corrugator. And that will change everything because if you realize you get damaged like 50 sheets, you just produce it and print it here. And it's not on the converter, converter that you realize you just are missing 20 or 25 pieces. You, you realize inside and then you can reproduce it. And this is, this is completely different. But the main reason and, and the most important thing for us was not changing the whole production, sure. not changing anything. Sure. Sure. Just put it in. Very good point. Um, Neil, so so what do you currently see as the main kind of challenges, hurdles that packaging companies see in, in moving forward towards digital? I think um you know, speaking from our perspective and you know the technology that Cabot brings, I think one of the biggest challenges and the things that we're constantly asked for is to to use our our technology to ensure that we optimize and, and maximize operability of the of the digital system and um, by that i mean you know make in making sure that the ink is has, has got the very best operability to minimize downtime to minimize maintenance so performance of the inks performance of the dispersions is extremely important and that really plays into the points that Johannes has just been making. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're putting printers in line with one of these big corrugators going 19 to the dozen. Yeah, then yeah. it's very important that your 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 digital printer has exemplary, uh, you know, operability and performance. And we can introduce a lot of that through the ink. Um, people, having said that, there is a massive focus on cost in use. And again. Um, the ink um, is not the sole contributor to cost in use, but it is a, a meaningful component. And you know the the you know, companies like Cabot, we already have plans in place to make sure that we're driving out cost in use. Uh, 
yeah. that can be reducing the cost of the of, of a uh, dollars per liter of the ink, but also making that ink more efficient or easier to use can play into it. Um, and then finally, and there's something that 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 is often forgotten, and I think that this will be a topic when when we're at the Drupa show. This market is by far, by far the largest market that Inkjet has ever gone into. And what this means is that um, the, the ensuring that you've invested in the right supply chain for when this inflection point takes place, for when the market, when the technology, when all the brand owners are there ready to pull this technology through, which I think we're, we're getting very close to, you know, everybody within the supply chain needs to make sure that they have their their their, their raw materials, their 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 um their supplies secured and they're set up because you're not going to be able to scrabble to make up time no, no. once it goes. And that's something else that we're extremely extremely focused on at Cabot yeah. um, to make sure that we're we're in a position to make sure that we've got security of supply and we can we can we can assure our customers downstream. Sure. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of points that are going to come out in this panel discussion, yeah, and that's yeah. the beauty of what I think we you know we we collectively pull together is hopefully we'll get a viewpoint from everybody along the supply chain, and what are the themes and what are what are the the the, the concerns from the, the the guys like Johannes? Mm. What are the what are the concerns from the guys like um, from Stefan from Nestle who's coming along? I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing from those guys and and see and see how the conversation develops. Yeah, um, Johannes, picking up on on Neil's kind of point, um, you know, do you, do you sense that there are opportunities for converters at the moment in the next few years? Do you sense there's there might be something around the corner that can kind of give us an, a, a new opportunity? New opportunity to invest in digital. Hmm. Uh, hmm. I think some regulations are coming up in the future. I mean, European regulations. I don't know about yeah. the US, honestly, <laughs> but there will be some regulations in the future um, who makes it necessary, definitely, to invest in digital. Um, I think we will talk about this in, on the panel discussion, and uh, yeah. that, that's something really interesting. I think there's some uh, there are some guys who has a really deep insight about about these topics as well. Because honestly, I didn't have it because. If I also move on to regulations now, uh, I will be, uh, my day needs 48 hours then. Yeah. But, I, I mean, this is something really, you have to look on it and people have to invest in, and competitors have to invest then in digital because you can't do it with a conversional yeah, yeah, yeah. anymore. Um, I just wonder, we, uh, Johannes talked a little bit about the kind of sustainability story. Um, Neil, do you sense there's anything around the sort of carbon requirements driving packaging decisions? It's a complex subject, but, I, you know, I think about this on at least two levels. The first one is very local to what we're doing. You know, for example, at our plant, we're, we're, we're bringing in sustainable use of sustainable energy, um, recycling of water, uh, within the plan, all of that to 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 co make a contribution on a very local level, but then when you start looking at uh, sustainability at a, at a at a much wider level, when you think about inkjet, I mean there's there's a multitude of benefits to inkjet. Mm -hmm. You know things like driving down inventory, um, you know doing as you know doing away with this minimum order quantity where people are are being forced to buy or order more than they actually need hopefully that'll feed through to 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 reduce in the amount that's actually being pulped that mm. you know packaging that doesn't get used for example yeah mm. Mm. um the opportunities inkjet brings you know to 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 increase the use of things like paper-based packaging rather than than maybe plastic yeah um all of those you know come together and i think inkjet plays a major role there um, but inkjet as a technology, I think, has just got a, a very powerful sustainability story around it. Mm, mm, definitely, um, General. I just, I just want to draw you back to the fact that we're talking. This, this uh, panel discussion will be at Drupa, and we're we're previewing Drupa as a as an event with this conversation. I just start, Johannes, with you. What are you hoping to see at Drupa? What are you feeling there might be? What's what's kind of 
what technology would you be you know excited by how do you think drupal will impact on the market what, what's your sense this this time around i mean with, with eight years without drupal i really hope to see that we that we have done a step forward in the last yeah. eight years i mean there was some online Drupal three years ago and which is not the same actually but now to have all the people on the floor and talk face to face and see if that's going on and see and get a feeling for what are the others thinking about digital what are the others thinking about the future um what are the suppliers what are the oem thinking and uh, what are our customers looking forward will be very interesting for me and i really hope that we see i don't believe that we see something really new because i think we all would know if yeah. there's something really 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 coming but um to get the feeling and to come back to have a good look forward that we are going to the right direction and to be really moving forward now because the last 10 years to be honest we don't saw that much moving on that we expected because if we have a look at a trooper 2012 and if we remember what we saw it would be coming the next 10 12 years and yeah what was really going on is not the same. So I'm really hoping that we see something. And also for me, for myself, important is to meet the people again, to meet really the, the people. I'm 36 years old. There are people that are more in digital than I'm old. So I really have to have to speak and to listen to these people and learn from them again. That yeah. would be something interesting yeah. for me as well. I think you're right. I mean, that's part of why we're doing this panel. It's again about that kind of conversation amongst people. Um, I'm interested actually in what you just said is because I think your your point is right. That there's probably not going to be that much technology, new machinery, you know, in the way there might have been in the years gone by. But I think what you might see is development of uh, things like software integration, uh, you know, an element of digital technology around that, um, you know, better inks, um, you know, I think... We're also maintenance, ma yeah, maintenance exactly, solutions, because exactly. this is something, for the last years, we developed machines, we developed inks, we moved on, we increased the speed, we increased the quality. And now the machines are running, the machines are stable, the process is stable, the workflow is stable. Now we have to look what is coming the next years, which means maintenance, service contracts, stuff like that. This is something we have to talk yeah, about. I think well, you're right. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Neil, did you want to add anything there? Because I, I think there's quite an interesting finish off in terms of conversation. Do you, do you sense what is your vision of, of Drupal? Well, it, I think we, when we always talk about this internally, we always go back to what are the experiences in previous markets. Hmm. And you think about the what we used to call the commercial print market. Now we call it graphic arts, right? Yeah. Get going into that market. Um, that had a period where you turn around and said over a, over a ten year period, it, it 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 evolved. It was embryonic, and then it kind of really took off, and it's mm. really starting to penetrate into those markets now. Mm. Feels to me that we're we're in that zone for packaging. Yeah, twenty sixteen, there was a lot of first generation stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, for the packaging market yep. now you've you've had eight years of development and we've mentioned a number of times we've missed a drooper we've missed a cycle mm. but all of the oems all of the pioneers all of the early adopters within the printing you know the printing market they haven't been they haven't been, they haven't been they haven't been they, they, they've all been doing stuff over the last eight years yep. they've all been in the background evolving developing They've got their second or even maybe third generation of product offering now, and I one of the things that we really want to do, what I really want to do is is well, how are the people further downstream thinking? Do they truly understand the strength and the power of this technology? Yeah, no, that's valid. And um, again, you know, just to reiterate, what the, what this panel is doing is bringing together. Brand, Nestle, you know, Stefan from Nestle. We've got um, designers. The idea really here is to try and give anyone who's interested in listening to this a, a vision of how that complete supply chain interacts with itself and, and discusses, you know, the needs, the requirements and the production process. So, so that's I mean, if, if, if Ian, who's also going to be on the panel, was here now, I know that he would be really talking about things like connected packaging and intelligent yeah. packaging yeah. 
and all of these 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 innovative things that the brands could do to really engage with the customers all of that so much of that is powered by inkjet or digital printing and inkjet but really when we say that we mean inkjet because that's the one with the productivity and the cost proposition yeah Mm, absolutely um but you know it, it feels as though the industry has developed and and is offering up this 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 technology and this capability and it's now for the downstream guys to say wow yeah it's yeah. powerful let's do something to really engage with our customers here yeah i think you're right johannes did you want to add any final comment to the discussion we look forward to seeing you i think i think you've got some good insight into in you know into how it really is as a converter did you want to add any final comment there's no comment for me i'm just being happy to sit on the table the troop with you together and have this discussion welcome the people so i'm really looking forward to it yeah now let me just explain as, as i as a wrap up here this as i said this panel will take place 11 30 to 12 30 on may the 31st which is the friday of the first week it's in hall of hall one and it's in room 17 you can register uh there'll be a note on the end of the show notes and uh we look forward to catching up with johannes and Neil there. Uh, I know that they'll be around after the panel for a, a little bit of lunch. So if you join the panel, you've got a chance to speak to them, catch up with them afterwards. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have some really good discussion there. So gentlemen, thank you very much for just giving us a little bit of a flavour. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Fraser. Well, Cheers, Johannes. Cheers, bye. Thank you.